continue with the entomology lecture so today we are going to learn about origin and evolution of insects and some topics related to the most probable insect origin the oldest fossil insect the primitive wingless insects primitive living winged insects transition from aquatic to terrestrial mode of life some aspects related to the origin and evolution of insect wings then topics related to principal traits in insect evolution like metamorphosis or metamorphism then eyes wings wing folding insect evolution and phylogeny then molecular phylogenetics okay so let's start this earlier annelids and arthropods were grouped into a common phylum the articulata because of various common characteristics and suggested monophyletic origin for both the groups from a common most primitive extant annelidian ancestor earlier tapes and man manton in 1958 proposed a polyphyletic theory of origin of arthropods that various arthropodan groups are descended from two different ancestors onico foran like and proto annelidian ancestors on the contrary Sharo in 1966 narrated a monophyletic theory according to which all arthropodan groups are derived from a single ancestor primitive annelidian groups ipopods represented by modern creeping polychaetes living on sponges family spinteridae and extinct precambrian fossils these primitive ipopod annelids are characterized with annulated podia anterior proboscis intestine with lateral diverticula and without nephridia he further suggested that from such a globopod annelid the middle cambrian onychophoran fossil asia pedunculata seems to be evolved after losing evers eversible proboscis and subsequent development of jaws so Sharo in 1966 considered a common ancestry for two arthropodan groups Myriapoda and Insecta or Antelocerita from a crustacean ancestor so Sharo's arthropodan ancestry shows one line of evolution of Myriapods and other insects and Symphylans form a hypothetical proto Myriapod ancestor Tykes and Manton in 1958 moreover consider that different groups of arthropods are evolved from variable worm like ancestors onychophora tardigrada meriapoda symphyta and insecta form onychophora ancestral stock and crustacea merostomata arachnida uridip uripterida and cyphosura and trilobita from 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 the proto annelidian ancestral stock according to tykes and manton in 1958 myriapods arose from onychophoran ancestor and insects to a proto symphylan transitional form ideas about the origin and evolution of insects can be traced back to aristotle but entomologists still do not understand the interrelationships of our insect orders and have not reached consensus on the origin and appearance of the first insect since long it is merely believed that the ancestor common to all insects was an annelid or annelid like creature that looked something like a modern earthworm this conclusion is based not on the fossil record or other empirical evidence but on evolutions of living organisms and much guesswork primarily the observation that insects have a long segmented body that is superficially similar if you ignore the legs wings and mouth parts to modern segmented worms because worm to insect evolution requires both the addition of many new structures and the loss of numerous other structures it would seem that abundant evidence of these many characters must exist in the fossil record but this is not observed this worm to insect evolution require both the addition of many new characters and the loss of numerous other structures 
it would seem that abundant evidence of these many cha changes must exist in the fossil record but this is not observed similarly class insecta is also assumed by many author authorities to have evolved from a myriapod or a millipede or some type of proto myriapod animal during the devonian period but even this conclusion about insect origin is controversial others argue that insects descended directly from trilobites others think the immediate ancestors were crustaceans yet others argue that insects evolved from centipedes in the silurian so although the insects are often grouped with millipedes and centipedes paleo entomological morphological and embryological evidence suggests a close evolutionary relationship with the crustaceans according to the pan crustacea theory insects together with among others malacostraca form a monophyletic group descended from a common ancestor so most probable insect origin the probable primitive looking of the insects alive today which such wingless species as the silver fish have led biologists to believe that insects may have evolved from a creature similar to anelida the supposed ancestor had a segmented worm like body with a pair of feet on each segment and may have looked something like the creature as onychophora which has a worm like body with a head and antennae and one pair of legs on each segment and hypothesis shows the first five segments of each of such an animal coalescing to form the head and next to three the thorax and the remainder being left for the abdomen the concentration of locomotive mechanisms in the thorax would have relieved the hind section of of the need for leg muscles and thus allowed them to develop the complex abdominal organs the most commonly accepted theory of the origin of insects is here described an organism resembling the modern earthworm may leave grown some kind of legs in each segment as a locomotive aid the development of head thorax and abdomen by aggregation of segments allowed followed variations of the limbs either disappeared or were modified in the head to become antennae and mouth parts and in the abdomen they probably just disappeared altogether or become pincers or other structures at the end of the body the theory of the merging of segments is supported by the fact that the thorax has six legs derived from the pairs on each of three segments and the head has five ganglia and the thorax three ganglia are nerve bundles of which there is one in each segment of the annelid worms the ganglia serve the purpose of brains in worms and play a lesser role subordinate to the brain in insects the oldest fossil insect a review of the insect fossil record literature reveals a complete lack of evidence for the evolution of insects and other arthropods this is true in spite of an abundance of fossil insects preserved in amber coal volcanic ash tar and other environments dating back to cambrian era the oldest well known insect fossil is devonian rhinognatha hirsti about 366 to 407 million years old this fossil insect possessed dicondylic mandibles similar to that in the winged insects subclass terigota suggesting that wings may already have evolved earlier most probably during the silurian period the primitive wingless insects the primitive wingless insects subclass epterigota particularly silver fishes order tisonura have so called dicondylic mandibles suggesting close relationships with the winged insects in addition epterigota and the most primitive order of the winged insects the may flies ephemeroptera and morphologically and physiologically quite similar to each other the names of some may fly species resemble with the aquatic Tysaurians modern archaeognatha and tysauria both possess rudimentary appendages the styli on the abdomen on their abdomen resembling with those found in the primitive extinct insects monera the most primitive insects archaeognatha recorded near the coast suggesting change of habitat of the insect ancestors from aquatic terrestrial it may be predicted that the arch tachia of insects were modified from the gills at the base of their appendages so recently averof and cohen in 
and discussed extensively a theory advocating origin of wings from ancestral gills. Next, primitive living winged insects. The mayflies, Epimeroptera, damsel dragonflies, Odonata and stoneflies, that is Plecoptera, represent the primitive living winged insects or Pterygota. They have aquatic nymphs and terrestrial adults and at the first instance evidence an evolution of the terrestrial insects from aquatic ancestral insects. But now it is well established that all insects with an aquatic nymphal or larval stage seem to have adapted to water secondarily from terrestrial ancestors. Of the most primitive insects with no wings at all are Cugnatha and Thysanuria. All members live their entire life cycle in terrestrial environments. As mentioned previously, Archeognatha were the first to split off from the branch that lead to the winged insects, Terigota, and then the Thynosura branch off. This indicate that these three groups, Archeognatha, Thysanura, and Terigota, have a common terrestrial ancestor. In fact, the insect larva and nymph gills are actually a part of modified closed tracheal system specially adapted for water called tracheal gills and strongly supported supporting that the insects are descended from a terrestrial ancestor. The unique evolution of abdominal appendages in external genitalia or claspers for direct insemination appear three times in insects. Firstly in the mayflies that means Epimeroptera, secondarily in the dragonflies that means Odonata and thirdly in the Neoptera, suggesting that mayflies are the oldest order among the flying insects, or Terigota. Okay. Then transition from aquatic to terrestrial mode of life. Some important evolution related aspects are here. So transition from aquatic to terrestrial mode of life. Some extinct insects like Paleodictoptera had an additional pair of winglets attached to the first segment of the thorax. For a total of three pairs, the wings are thought by many entomologists to be highly modified tracheal gills and there is no doubt that the tracheal gills of the mayfly nymph in many species look like wings. By comparing a well developed pair of gill blades in the naiads and a reduced pair of hind wings on the adults, it is not hard to imagine that the mayfly gills like Erga Lie and insect wings have a common origin and newer research also supports this. The Tergalie are not found in any other order of insects and they have evolved into different directions with time. In some nymphs, Naiads, the most anterior pair has become sclerotized and works as a gill cover for the rest of the gills. Others can form a large sucker, be used for swimming or modified into other shapes, but it doesn't have to mean that these structures were originally gills. It could also mean that the Targalia evolved from the same structure which gave rise to the wings and that flying insects evolved from a wingless terrestrial species with pairs of blades on its body segments, three on the thorax and nine on the abdomen. May fly nymphs with nine pairs of Ergalie on the abdominal axis, abdomen axis, but so far no living or extinct insects with plates on the last two segments have been found. If these were primary gills, it would be a mystery why they should have waited so long to be modified when we see the different modifications in modern mayfly, mayfly nymphs. The water swimming theory suggests that swimming on the water surface is the origin of insect flight. This theory is based on the fact that the first fossil insect, the Devonian Rhinognatha kirsti, is thought to have possessed wings, even though their closest evolutionary ties are with crustaceans, which are aquatic. The peculiar feature of the most primitive winged insects, mayflies, is the presence of a traditional transitional developmental stage between the last instar nymph and an adult, Imago. The Sabimago, which seems to be evolved only in Epimeroptera among the Rigota. The reasons the Sabimago still exist in this order could be that there hasn't been enough selection pressure on to get rid of it. It also seems specifically adapted to do this transition from water to air 
as we know in mayflies the nymphs and the adults are specialized for two different ways of living in the water and in the air through the state sabinigo in more primitive fossil forms the pre adult individuals had not just one in star but numerous ones adult form was reached several months before molts before maturity as at present can be seen in nepterigota modern mayflies have eliminated all the instars between imigo and nymph except the single instar called sabimigo which is still not fully sexually mature the other flying insects with incomplete metamorphosis except tricota have gone a little further and completed the trend here all the immature structures of the animal from the last nymphal stage are completed at once in a single final molt the more advanced insects with larvae and complete metamorphosis have gone even further an interesting theory here is that the pupal stage is actually a strongly modified and extended stage of sabimigo and here is enough evidence that some insects within the exoptericota strips and white flies uh, have evolved pupae like stages too then some other aspects related to the water skimming theory we just learned so transition from aquatic to terrestrial mode of life some extinct insects like paleodictoptera had an additional pair of winglets attached to the first segment of the thorax for a total of three pairs the wings are thought by many entomologists to be highly modified tracheal gills and there is no doubt that the tracheal gills of the may fly nymph in many species look like wings by comparing a well developed pair of gills gill bladder in the nades and reduced a pair of hind wings on the adults it is not hard to imagine that the may fly gills and insect wings have a common origin and newer research also supports this the targaliae are not found in any other order of insects and they have evolved into different directions with time in some nymphs mates the most anterior pair yeah. has become yeah. sclerotized and works as a gill cover for the rest of the gills others can form a large sucker be used for swimming or modified into other shapes but it doesn't have to mean that these structures were originally gills it could also mean that the Tergalia evolved from the same structures which gave rise to the wings and that flying insects evolved from a wingless terrestrial species with pairs of plates on its body segments three on the thorax and nine in on the abdomen may fly nymphs with nine pairs of tergalia on the abdomen exist but so far no living or extinct insects with plates on the last two segments have been found if these were primary gills it would be a mystery why they should have waited so long to be modified when we see the different modifications in modern mayfly nymphs the water skimming theory is just skimming theory i'm sorry skimming theory but the water skimming theory is just that skimming on the water surface is the origin of insect flights flight this theory is based on the fact that the first fossil insect the devonian rhinognatha hirsti is thought to have possessed wings even though their closest evolutionary ties are with crustaceans which are aquatic peculiar features of the most primitive winged insects may flies is the presence of transitional developmental stage between the last instar nymph and an adult or imigo the sabimigo which seems to be evolved only in ephemeroptera ema terigota The reasons the sabimigo still exist in this order could be that there hasn't been enough selection pressure to get rid of it. It also seems specifically adapted to do the transition from water to air. As we know, the mayflies, the nymphs, and the adults are specialized for two different ways of living: in the water and the air through the stage sabimigo. In more primitive fossil forms, the pre-adult individuals had not just one in star but numerous ones adult form was reached several molts before maturity as at present can be seen in apterigota modern mayflies have eliminated all the instars between imigo and nymph 
except the single in star called Savimigo, which is still not fully sexually mature. The other flying insects with incomplete metamorphosis, except the Gota, have gone little further and completed the trend. Here, all the immature structures of animal from the last nymphal stage are completed at once in a single final molt. The more advanced insects with larvae and complete metamorphosis, endopterigota, have gone even further. An interesting theory here is that the pupal stage is actually a strongly modified and extended stage of Sabimigo and there is enough evidence that some insects within the exopterigota, strips and white fly have evolved pupae like stages too. Then origin and evolution of insect wings. There is no insect archaeopteryx. That means the retailed fossils of archaeopteryx, Cynorus, another early bird, and contemporary triopod dinosaurs have provided the morphological basis for speculation and modeling of the evolution of flight in birds. The complete lack of such transitional insect fossils between the early Devonian and the upper Carboniferous fossils considerable problems for analogous studies of evolution of insect wings and flight. Various theories of origin of insect wing are discussed in the chapter which we will be learning after some time. The long popular hypothesis was that insect wings were derived from paranotal lobes, lateral extensions of the thorax originally not articulated and probably used for gliding. So proposed support for the paranotal hypothesis came from the presence in a number of paleozoic insect groups of just such lateral projections complete with wing-like venation on the first segment of the thorax in addition to the actual wings on the second and third segments. Smaller projections in Therasaurian silverfish, the living sister group to winged insects do allow them limited gliding ability further supporting the proposal. Many authors including Muller in 1875, Crampton in 1916, Snowgrass and Alexander and Brown and some other scientists advocated strongly the paranormal model and have start to explain the functional significance of fixed paranormal lobes or the presence by which processes by which they become converted into wings and other authors including King Solver and Coyle in 1985 have provided information on the possible functions of primarily fixed or mobile appendages. During the latter part of the last century however an alternative hypothesis become prominent pointed out that a major problem with the paranormal theory is that the insect wing articulation is not a simple structure. Insect wings are articulated by a set of small plates surrounding the junction of the wings and the thorax. So, Kukeloa Peck proposed that the wings were derived from excites, lateral branches of the legs found in crustaceans. The fossil record of marine arthropods indicates that branched legs were part of the original arthropod ground plant and many crustaceans that retain them show modifications in the egg sites into alternative structures. The gills of crabs and lobsters, for instance, as a modified egg sites. According to Hukalova Peck's proposal, egg sites present in the ancestral insects were moved into a dorsal portion on the thorax to give rise to the wings. Then Kukalova Peck proposed that the excites had originally been developed as gills in aquatic ancestral insects. The two basal most living orders of winged insects, mayflies and dragonflies, and both aquatic as nymphs and mayfly nymphs, have winglet like gills on the abdomen. It was suggested that the original gills could have been transformed into wings by their development as sails for skimming across the water surface. In support, Kukilova Peck in 1970, 1987 described a number of carboniferous insect fossils retaining excites on their legs. By the late 1990s, the excite theory had become generally accepted. Then King Solver and Cohill in 1994 supported the theory proposed by Kukilova Peck in 1987 on the basis of neurophysiological studies showing that Interneurons involved in the generation of flight 
motor activity occurs in the first three abdominal ganglia in some insects as well as in thoracic ganglia. The existence of apparently homologous interneurons in abdominal segments clearly supported the idea of articulated movable winglets that are serially homologous on both abdominal and thoracic segments. This neurophysiological study so suggests that the organization of the central nervous system in insects is quite conservative evolutionary. For example, abdominal giant interneurons in primitive wingless and pterygote insect orders represent cellular homology that are derived from the same set of neuroblasts in the embryonic central nervous system. Recently, strong support for an exile origin of Excite origin of wings came from studies of drosophila development. Many of the same genes are expressed in the development of drosophila wings and crustacean gills. While cells involved in wing development migrate dorsally from the leg primordia. Overall, the evidence against the paranoid theory and in favor of the limb exile origin of wings is strong. Origin and division of insect wings, we just learn some aspects. So, King Solver and Cohill supported the theory. Then, Drosophila wings, then Truman in 1990 discussed critically the issue evolution of insect wings and finally drew the conclusion that although Cucello spec has provided evidence that insect wings evolved from primitively movable excite lobes of leg podomers proximal to the coxa. Reinterpretation of previous experiment findings suggests that this hypothesis has currently formulated is only partly correct. The coastal subcoastal field is derived from an epicoxal excite but the radial median medial and cubital anal fields of the wing have arisen from epicoxal endite and or subcoxal excite and endite lobes. Wings this have a complex origin limb excite plus endite. In conclusion most hypotheses about the origin and evolution of insects can be accommodated in one of two opposing models an aquatic model or a terrestrial model. A compromise between these models has also been proposed. Some of the major differences between the aquatic and terrestrial models are presented. Then principles, principal traits in insect evolution, metamorphism. Metamorphism, the most astonishing evolutionary advance among the insects was the establishment of complete metamorphism in the most successful group. The life cycle of these insects is outlined as follows. Larva, the immature insect or larva escapes from the egg and acts essentially as an eating machine gathering nutrients. The larva has no wings or reproductive organs and has a form which does not resemble the adult of the species but appears to be more like its ancient pre-insect ancestor. The larva's body is generally worm-like and may have no legs or may have extra legs to support the long body. As the larva eats, it grows extraordinarily quickly and molting a specific number of times before it pupates. The larvae of beetles are commonly called grubs and larvae of flies, maggots and larvae of butterflies and most caterpillars. Pupa and the larva has grown large enough and ingested enough food. It enters a stage of apparent dormancy as a pupa. The larva usually protects itself either in a secure hiding spot within a shelter of its own construction or inside a cocoon spun of silk from a gland near its mouth as it prepares to pupate. It appears to be resting but in fact nothing could be further from the truth. It is during this phase that the metamorphism occurs. The insect must completely rearrange its internal and external structure and create some entirely new structure such as reproductive organs and wings. An adult. Adult. The mature insect represents the true form of the species. It is the larvae which departs from the characteristic body plan. The adult emerges head first from the skin of the pupae, fills its wings with blood and immediately or within a few hours it flies away. 
In all insect species, only the adults can reproduce. Indeed, in many insects, the adult's sole purpose is reproduction. Many adults move, slack a feeding apparatus entirely and live only a few days, just long enough to mate, whereas houseflies, for example, are well known for their adult eating behaviors or habits. Other insects undergo what is termed incomplete metamorphism. The immature individuals of the species called nymphs if they live on land and naiads if they live in water closely resemble the adult form but with significant differences. Such features as coloration and the shape of the body may differ between the nymph and the adult but the most significant difference is that the nymph has no wings and cannot reproduce. All of these insects go through a procedure called molting numerous times as they grow. When an individual becomes too large to fit comfortably inside of its skeleton, a hormone is produced which triggers molting. The immature insect then develops a soft protective layer underneath its hard skeleton, splits this shell and pulls itself out of it and lets its new soft skeleton harden. In all incompletely metamorphosing winged insect species, the wings only appear with the final molt as they would otherwise be shed with the skeleton and they cannot be replaced. The eyes. One of the very earliest identifying features of insects is the compound eyes found only among the insects, the centipedes and crustaceans and the house sh horse shoe crab. The compound eye is composed of a large number, generally a few hundred thousand of facets. There is, however, great advantage to the compound eye system as the insects have adapted flying mode of locomotion. Image processing is so much more efficient than is the case with, for example, a simple eyes of other animals that the compound eye offers a much greater flicker fusion rate. So an insect can assimilate changes in what it's seeing many times more quickly than we can. They are also excellent for detecting motion, essentially just recording slight changes in the image over short intervals. Then wings. The most accepted theory of origin of wings is that they grew out of gill-like apparatus representing the very earliest insects. Some of these gills may have grown over time after they were supplanted in the adults of by trachea to form little flaps. Initially, these proto wings would have been useful for little more than jumping, perhaps adding a little to the distance over which an insect could leap. Gradually, these wings would have grown larger until they could be used for controlled diving, gliding, and then even flapping flight. The Mega Secoptera, a very old order related to Odonata, the wingspan reached as much as one meter, could flap its wings and even so the most advanced of flight like in birds and insects with the largest wingspans can involve extended periods of gliding and require great control over the wings and only occasional flapping. Most modern insects have functional wings as adults and every order has at least some winged species so that this principal criterion for distinguishing insects at all hierarchy level is the wing morphology. In wing folding, one very important development in evolution of insects was the ability to fold the wings to protect them. The ancient order Odonata, which includes the dragonflies and damselflies, contains species of Carboniferous and Permian age with wing spans as great as one meter, the largest in insect history. Certainly, the ability to fold these wings would have been beneficial. The dragonflies have not evolved the necessary musculature and cannot fold their wings. Thus, dragonflies must rest with their wings fully spread and vulnerable. Beetles have hardened their front wings to form protective cover, among other things, their hind wings. In addition to things, this beetles fold up their hind wings under the shell like a letter stuffed into an envelope. Insect evolution and phylogeny, according to some scientists, pterygote insect fossils first appear at the end of lower Carboniferous in Namurian some 325 million years ago. By this time, both Paleopterous and Neopterous lines had undergone substantial radiations. The evolution of pterygotes clearly occurred considerably earlier. Unfortunately, the fossil record for hexapods before the upper carboniferous is almost entirely lacking. 
Early Devonian localities 375 to 395 MYH have revealed several hexapod fossils, apparent columbona or spring tails from the Rhiney shirt in Scotland and apparent Archeognatha in Quebec. These fossils are all quite small in size. Their occurrence during this period suggests that endognathus and ectognathus hexapods likely diverged during the Silurian. There are no well established insect fossils between the early Devonian and the Namurian. A crucial period of early 75 million years. Many authors suggest that the divergence of pterygoods from other primitive wingless insect groups occurred during the Devonian. Whereas Kukalova Peck in 1987 argued that divergence occurred earlier during the Silurian. However, direct evidence is lacking. The phylogenetic relationships among the major hexapod groups are still in flux, but several main features seem generally established. First, the divergence of columbolins and protuberance from other groups occurred early in the history of hexapods. Second, the ectognaths form monophyletic group consisting of the archaeognatha, extinct monura, tysanura and terigota. Third, the tysanura, which is silverfish, are the sister group of the terigota, sharing an immediate co common ancestor. This is the morphology and habits of the archaeognatha and tysuria, I am not sure about the pronunciation, tysanura are of special interest in understanding the evolution of the rigots and molecular phylogenetics in order to overcome a long lasting dispute regarding origin and evolution of the rigot insects the phylogenetic position of the ephemeroptera within the terigota has been a subject of interest in this regard three competing hypotheses are at present available the paleoptera hypothesis states that ephemeroptera plus odonata are sister to neoptera with alternatives being a basal epimeroptera hypothesis, epimeroptera plus odonata plus neoptera, and a basal odonata hypothesis, odonata plus epimeroptera neoptera. Each hypothesis has supported from morphological characters. A remarkable progress has been made during last two decades in the molecular phylogenetics, and it may prove validity of one of those hypotheses. These hypotheses recently. Homer et al. in 2002 analyzed two nuclear genes, 18S and 28S rRNA from the ribosomal subunit, showing evidence in the favor of the Paleoptera hypothesis. Studies of Ogden and Witting in 2003, based on analysis of the nuclear genes, 18S and 28S rRNA, with the addition of a third gene, protein coding histone 3, providing evidence for both the Paleoptera and Epimeroptera hypothesis in depending on alternate alignment methods. Simalat so and Giribet in 2006, moreover, used a broader taxon sample and only the ribosomal subunit data, 18S and 28S, which strongly evidenced the Odonata hypothesis. Finally, a super matrix approach of all available data, combining four nuclear and five mitochondrial genes with 170 morphological characters, supported the Paleoptera hypothesis. Thus, it could be argued that the debate has come full circle. From the mitochondrial genome sequence analysis, Zhang et al. in 2008 noticed that the origin of replication, the AT rich region in mayflies, has the lowest known A plus T content of any extant hexapod. According to Gregory 2005, mayflies have one of the smallest genomes of the hemimetabolous insects, perhaps similar to that of many holometabolous insects. It is now well evident that the smaller genomes more readily allow for complete metamorphosis in insects. By virtue, the mayflies alone retain the sub stage and provide a critical link in the evolution of genomic size and the transitions from incomplete to complete metamorphosis. The ancient mayflies therefore seem to be an ancestral group for Pterygota. Next, we are going to learn about extinct insect orders. Paleontological studies revealed some extinct insects, mostly from their well-preserved wings in the fossils of coal, elegonite, peats, and amber impregnated with resin of Pennsylvanian or Permian to the lower 
carboniferous age. The earliest Columbulan Rainella precursor has been recorded from the Middle Devonian fossil peat bag of rain in Scotland, while Paleorictoptera Protoptera Proto Donata Mega Sectoptera and Proto Blattoidea are obtained from the fossils of Carboniferous spirit. There are about 11 extinct insect orders. Their classification is mostly based on the wing venation. Most of the insects become extinct before the end of Permian period. They had much primitive morphological features in comparison to their descendants and are widely considered as the early ancestors of several existing orders. The brief synopsis of these orders are given below. First, we will be learning about subclass Epterichota, Epterichota Order 1, Monura, and Moyen Uri. They resemble Microcorphila or Archaeognatha in having 10 complete segments with paired styles in the abdomen but without surgery. They belong to upper Carboniferous and lower Permian period. Example, Dacylectus. Then subclass Terigota, order Paleodictoptera. They were large and stout with the wing span of 20 cm and some may had even more than 40 cm. Subclass Epterigota. Order 1 Manura. They resemble Microcorphyla or Archaeognatha, we just mentioned. Then subclass Terigota. Order 2 Paleodictyoptera. They were large and stout with wingspan of 20 cm and some may had even more than 40 cm. The peculiar feature of interest is the prothorax with a pair of lobes attached to the pronotum. They were very large, sclerotized and showed a venation system homologous to wing venation. They had abdomen like ephemeropteran nymphs and multi-segmental cerci about twice the length of abdomen. The female had a long oipister while male with claspers and paired edegis. They were existing during Pennsylvanian and Permian periods. Example, Stenodictia. Order 3, Mega Secoptera. They were slender, medium to large in size with long cerci and sucking beak like mouth parts and with falcate or hooded shaped wings having specialized wing venation. They were recorded from Pennsylvanian fossils. Example, Aspidothorax and Pseudohymen. Then, order 4. Diaphanopteroidea. They resemble with Paleodictyoptera and Mega Secoptera, except that they were able to fold their wings over the body. They are recorded from strata of Pennsylvanian and Permian age. Then, order 5. Protodontata. They were largest in size with wingspan between 12 to 75 cm. They closely resemble dragonflies and with large eyes, long slender body, strong mandibles and wing venation. They appeared in Pennsylvanian or Triassic period. It is considered that they gave rise to the Odonata during the Pennsylvanian age, Meganeura and Archotypus. Then order 6, Prototroptera. They were the earliest fossil Neopterans characterized by Coraceous four wings and with expanded anal lobe bearing hind wings and by mandibulate or sheaving mouthparts. Suborder Protoblatoidea resembles with cockroaches. They had archidactyl and venation pattern with several anal veins or four and hind wings. They occurred during Pennsylvanian or Permian age. Then Leomopterum stenoneurus. Then order 7. Meomoptera, they were small sized extinct insects resembling soap, Sopcoptera and were bearing mandibulate mouthparts and short cerci. They were existing during early Pennsylvanian to Permian period. Then Delopterum and Permembria. Then Caloneuroidea, they were resembling Isoptera as their fold and hind wings are mostly identical and with 
mandibulate mouth parts and extremely short cirrhosis. It was a Pennsylvanian Permian order. Then order 9. Protocoleoptera. The insects were small and were characterized by modification of four wings into elytra and hind wings with longitudinal and transverse folds in an enlarged anal veins, strong legs, short cirrhosis, stout antennae and they were preserved in Permian fossils. They thought to be the ancestors of Diptera rather than Coleoptera. Then example Protilip Protilitra. Then order 10 Protoperlaria. These insects were obtained from Permian sediments and closely related to Plecoptera. They had four wings longer than the hind ones and retained five anal veins. Some Protopelaria possessed lateral flat lobes on prothorax. The hind legs were stout and larger than others and the cirrhosis were long. Lematophora. Then order 11. Glossicel Rodia. It is the only extinct endopterygoat neopteran order. The four wings become elepta, venation become complex and resemble with the neoptera. They recovered from Permian to the Jurassic period. Example, Argoglossoptera. Epterygota, Monura, Terygota, Paleodictyoptera, Megasecoptera, then Diaphanoteroptia, Diaphno. Pteroidia, Protodonata, Protoroptera, Neomoptera, Caleoneuroidia, Protocoloteria, then Protoperlaria, then Glossilectroidia. Now we are going to learn about some initial aspects related to the integument, insect integument. The integument of insects like that of other animals is an outer dermoexkeleton covering of the body and this derived from the embryonic ectoderm. Ectoderm in the sense, not endoderm, not the inner one, the outer one. Embryonic ectoderm. It is functionally a composite structure that serves as a skin, skeleton, food reservoir and switches on post embryonic development by undergoing molting periodically. Structure and chemistry, this is basically composed of three layers, the inner basement membrane, middle epidermis and the outer cuticle. The epidermis is commonly called as the hypodermis as it lies below the cuticle. It is the only layer of integument that is cellular, while the inner basement membrane as well as outer cuticle both are cell cellular structures. It is basically composed of three layers we mentioned the inner basement membrane, middle epidermis and the outer cuticle. The epidermis is commonly called the hypodermis as it lies below the cuticle. It is the only layer of integument that is cellular while the inner basement membrane as well as the outer cuticle both are a cellular structures. The epidermis secretes the cuticle and the cuticle is modified later onto various skeletal sclerites, appendages, sensory organs and internal lining of the fore and hind gut and tracheal system, some organs of reproduction and the exocrine glands. Then the basement membrane. It is formed from the degenerated epidermal cells and appears as a non-living amorphous granular inner lining of the integument. It separates the epidermis from the hemocyl. It is about 0.5 micron thick. The histochemical studies reveal that it is composed primarily of the neutral mucopolysaccharides on inner surface of the basement membrane are attached the muscle, hemocytes and enocytes. Sometimes the stellate tracheal cells, collagen fibrils and connective tissue fibrils are embedded in the basement membrane. In the epidermis, it is an unicellular layer formed from the polygonal cells. The polygonal cells may modify into cuboidal or columnar cells having instinct, in a indistinct cell boundaries at the time of molting. However, in the old adult insects, the epidermal cells undergo degeneration and the dermis is represented merely by nuclei lying beneath the cuticle. During post-embryonic development, the epidermal cells are well defined. The nuclei are polyploid, possessing a large number of nucleoli. The cytoplasm is characterized by containing various kinds of pigment granules. The adjacent epidermal cells are held with one another by means of cytoplasmic crosses 
the desmosomes each epidermal cell produces a large number of cytoplasmic crosses apically the pore canal transferring trans traversing the cuticle and opening above a cuticular layer the epidermal cells differentiate in some regions of the integument and constitute various types of mechano and chemoreceptor organs the dermal glands and particularly in diptheral larvae and periostigmic glands around the spiracles each dermal gland is formed by a group of three cells the medial cell constituting the body of the gland and termed as the trichogen cell while the remaining cells constitute the duct of the gland and are termed as tormogen cells during molting some epidermal cells modified into the so called molting glands which secrete the molting fluid that digests the old endocuticle to ensure further growth of the new cuticle sometimes the myofibrils penetrate to the epidermis from the site of muscle attachment in the cuticle the cuticle is a secretory product of the epidermis it forms an outermost thick layer of the integument and dermis surface pattern and physical chemical properties of integument it is differentiated into three major regions outer epicuticle middle exocuticle and inner endocuticle the epicuticle is non chitinous while the exo and endocuticle are chitinous regions the exo and endocuticles are differentiated from the initially secreted procuticle due to sclerotization or tanning that takes place in the upper region the exocuticle therefore represent the sclerotized or tanned and the endocuticles non sclerotized or untanned undifferentiated regions of the cuticle besides this three static regions two more non static regions develop at the time of molting between the exo and endonucleus as a transitional semi hard and little dark in the region commonly known as the mesocuticle the other region arises in between the endocuticle and epidermis in the form of membrane and known as ecdysial membrane or the subcuticle the structures can be seen only during larval and pupal molts and are completely absent from the cuticle of adult insects the functional significance of these regions is still obscure first the epicuticle it is a very thin outermost layer and varies in thickness from 0.03 to 0.4 micron it is composed of three or four superimposed layers outer cement layer second wax layer third polyphenol layer and inner one cuticle the polyphenol layer is reported only in some insects then the cement layer it is secreted by the dermal glands and or so called versons glands in lepidoptera it is composed of lipoprotein complex resembling the natural product shellac secreted by the lac insect lucifer lecca lacca it also contains a carbohydrate like a lactose it functions as a varnish and provides protective external surface to the integument it absorbs the mobile lipids that are used for sealing over the surface aberrations in order to prevent water loss from the body it serves as a reservoir for lipids too the wax layer it is a prominent layer about 0.25 million thick containing partially oriented wax molecules it is composed of hydrocarbons 48 to 58% free fatty acids 70 to 80% esters 9 to 11% cholesterol 2 to 3% and polymers 12 to 15% it does not contain alcohols and like that of plant waxes it simply consists of long chain hydrocarbons and esters of both fatty acids and alcohols it is a monolayer either in solid or liquid phase and hydrophilic groups of the molecules are absorbed on the cuticular layer it serves as a waterproof layer of the integument as water molecules cannot pass through closely packed wax molecules then the polyphenol layer this layer is described in the blood sucking bug rhodonitis prolaxis and appears often in the liquid state as a non static layer containing various types of polyhydrophenols like homocatechol protocatechol deca dopa catechol hydroquinone pyrogallol etc the polyphenols are transported from the epidermal cells through the pore canals and accumulate on other surface of the on outer surface of the cuticular layer in some insects in spite of forming an independent layer polyphenols are used to impregnate the cuticle at the time of sclerotization these polyphenols are oxidized to quinones in the presence of an enzyme the phenol oxidizes and then the quinones tan first the proteins of cuticular layer and the later proteins of outer procuticle to produce the exocuticle 
the cuticle layer is a refractory amber colored layer consisting of lipoprotein the cuticle it is highly resistant to the mineral acids and most of the organic solvents this serves as a permeability and growth barrier and determines the surface properties of the integument the chitinous cuticle exo and endo cuticle it is a lamellar or stratified structure differentiated as an outer exo cuticle and inner endo cuticle the exo cuticle is darkly pigmented hard and sclerotized from which are differentiating secondarily the sclerites on different regions of the body due to tough and inelastic properties the exo cuticle provide strong mechanical support to the body it is a product of sclerotization then the lamellar organization the chitin microfibers which lie parallel to each other often form a group of layers about 20 to 250 angstrom thick the orientation of microfibrils differ from one lamella to the other and hence it becomes easy to recognize and count them in the sections so observations in the locus suggest that lamellar cuticle is produced in the night while the non lamellar on the day as in the later all microfibrils follow one and the same direction the fully formed cuticle is composed of alternate lamellae and non lamellae regions due to the lamellar architecture the endo cuticle becomes much elastic and provides flexibility and stretching properties to the integument then the pore canal they run throughout the thickness of the cuticle in perpendicular perpendicular direction after transversing the chitin microfibrils the pore canal are very fine structures measuring about 0.15 to 1 not 1.0 microns in diameter they contain the cytoplasmic fine process of the epidermal cells in the newly synthesized cuticle the pore canal follow the spiral cores and contain the cytoplasmic filament while in the matured cuticle they become straight and contain cuticular substances additionally the pore canals are divided into wax layer of the epicuticle after penetrating the cuticle and layer sometimes there is a portion partition beneath the site of branching which is known as the pore plate the pore plate separate the wax filament like region of pore canal from that filled with the chitin so there are about 15000 canals per square mm in the endocuticle of sarcophaga while unlike 20000 per square mm in periplanata the pore canal perform the function of transport of various cuticular substances from the epidermal cells onto upper surface of the procuticle to facilitate its growth and sclerotization then chitin protein microfibrils the chitin cuticle is composed of two types of molecules the chitin and the protein chain which are often closely associated with one another chitin is a nitrogenous polysaccharide named by odia and it is made up of long chains of acetylated glucosamine residues n acetyl glucosamine the adjacent chitin chains are held together by beta glycosidic linkages particularly the hydrogen bonds to form the microfibrils the neighboring chains always run in opposite direction the chitin microfibrils are embedded in proteinaceous cements particularly in the region of the exocuticle the chitin molecules are linked with the with the protein molecule throughout the cuticle by covalent bonds to form a glycoprotein it forms 60% of the dry weight in endocuticle and 22% of dry weight in exocuticle in periplanata it is insoluble in water alcohol ether and other organic solvents and alkalis but soluble in concentrated mineral acids it has about 1.5 specific gravity and 1.55 refractive index then biosynthesis of chitin chitin is synthesized by an insect epidermis the active chitin monomers are secreted into the extracellular apolipient phases where they are polymerized to form chain by the enzyme chitin synthetase chitin synthetase in insects is controlled by 20 hydroxy ecidazone and it is ph and temperature dependent chemical process chitin synthesis takes place via the metabolic pathway of eight or more steps converting hemolymph trihalose into chitin as follows trihalose glucose glucose 6 phosphate lactose 6 phosphate glucosamine 6 phosphate n acetyl glucosamine 6 phosphate n acetyl glucosamine 1 phosphate uridine phosphate n acetyl glucosamine chitin chitin microfibrils chitin microfibrils are ranging from 25 to 30 angstrom in diameter it is 
present in cuticle in crystalline form each crystal consists of 16 to 21 chains forming three sheets each containing six or seven chains crystallographically chitinous hydrogenous consisting of three polymorphs 